Hey, how you doing? Well, welcome to day three of the vloggery. My name is Sean Leroy, and this is a recap of my last seven years pursuing the entertainment industry as an actor. I started out homeless, drug addict, alcoholic, and not knowing anybody out here. I knew one person, but I didn't know how to get in touch with him. Anyhow, uh, it was, what, near the t end of 2011, yeah. I had just, actually, my grandmother, God bless her. It was just it was just a birthday. I got her uh, a birthday card. My awesome new portfolio pad. So it's got a paper thing on both sides, I love it. I've been needing a new one for like two years. I wanted to uh, expand a little bit on some of my regimen and my, some of my stuff that I did, you know, to acquire this this work. A lot of this work and auditions that I did my very first year. My first year, 40 auditions. So that means probably closer to 45 because I may have missed one one or two here or there. I worked between 55 and 60 jobs. But you know, out of those 40 or 40 plus auditions, I only landed three, you know, three principals. But you know what, it's still better odds than what I had out there looking for a job, ironically enough. And how I found those jobs where I got those auditions was through Actors Access. I mean, just on top of it, you know, the Actors Access casting networks every so often. IMDB, uh, Playbill, Backstage, those those of course meet and greets and stuff you know sometimes you can get get an eardrop on something it's on the model model mayhem and you can find a lot of photographers just starting out willing to do photos for trade you know they give you the photos that they take and there are some good photographers on there there so it's 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 a good route you know especially if you ain't got the money for those headshots and don't do it yourself I tried that it just kind of looks really not well <laughs> you know I was really tight on my on my working out. I had a big belly. Oh, I had a belly. Well, before I lost all my weight, but I didn't like that belly, you know. So I actually I wound up working up to a regimen of 700 between 700 and 800 sit-ups a day. Uh, approximately between four to six days a week. Uh, dips off my windowsill and a and a chair. Got gallon jugs, you know, from milk, and I filled them up with water or anything heavier and then I wrap the leather belt through the through the handles and then just wrap it around your your your, your hand do it that way or you can use a uh, cloth belt to be a little bit softer I ran about three miles sometimes between two between two to four three or four days a week diamond push-ups off the beams on the roof of the apartment I used to love to go up there and drink a coffee, drink my coffee first thing in the morning, because I was so used to the early regiments from, from the rehabs and just having to bounce from place to place and, and always on the move. You know, I did all this on an eight by eight room with a one and a half by two and a half foot closet built on the inside of that eight foot by eight foot room. I worked off the end of my bed and used a, a, a shelving thing as, as my desktop. I did that for five years. There's a reason why I don't have a bed in my room now. <laughs> oh, I heard from the Met yesterday. That's a nice thing. So that starts up in a couple weeks. So that's that's good. That's pay. That's, that's money. I, I'm so blessed to be there. And I'm so happy that I'm now later on in my life there as opposed to before because making that transition, you know, dealing with with all those battles and stuff, I mean, I wasn't transitioning from that homeless lifestyle and living in mentality and fight, fight. I mean, the fight is still in me, but I give us just a fight because even if it wasn't a reason to fight, I had to fight. 
you know, and I was fighting against myself. I could, I hated myself. I hated everything. There are things that I'm not even saying on here, and for good reason. So just believe when I say I lost everything. So, except for acting. Except for acting. Acting in the Lord, dog. That's what it is. The Lord and acting. But I just, I, I had my moments that I had, which slowly deteriorated from the success that I was building and working towards, which I'll get into in the next few entries. And On the way to, um, because the train broke down today, big surprise, going to the gym. So I figured, fuck it, I'll just walk down to, uh, you know, to pick up my packages. It was about a mile and a half, no biggie. It just finished raining. It was nice. Uh, something made me think about an old debt that I thought I'd paid off, or maybe I'd forgotten about it, Some, but it's not paid off. Long story. It's short. What it was was... Back in, when I got that scholarship, it was the head of admissions offered me $40 to buy a pair of shoes for work. Of course, the soles in the bottom wore off by the time I did find the job. But, you know, I took it and I considered it a loan. He said, all right, you know, write me a rain check or it'll be a rain check. Some, some, something along those lines. It was raining like a motherfucker today, this morning. When I looked, when I, when I looked at the date, to try and get his uh, his address. The date was today's date, August 18th, 2012. I paid him interest. I mean, I ain't got the money for it, but the man really helped me out. Hope it gets to him and I hope he can do something with it. And I will feel so great when it when it's finally paid. Those little things, you know? But it was just, it was amazing how that full circle, you know, so often that full circle happens. Sometimes it's extremely in your face, sometimes it's not, but I guess you get some, not always, but you, it's not uncommon to get another chance, another go round. And if you just notice it, if you recognize it, and if you're open and try to stay attuned to it, you'll be able to possibly fix something that, or do something right this go around that you may not have hit the mark on last time, even if it's just a parallel or similar who knows sometimes it might be the same thing but I guess and that's something I'm having a difficult time doing is because you know just kind of let myself be open and and allow myself to just go with the flow and let go go with the flow of life let the Lord do his work and let go you know and it was so easy to do that when I was homeless because I ain't had shit anyways right what the fuck am I gonna fuck up what am I gonna lose I have nothing to lose but now I have things and I know I have to do things to keep those things or maintain those things but to do things I've got to control what I'm going to do plan out what I'm gonna do work what kind of work you know and so on and so forth and <laughs> the Lord doesn't work like that so I'm really struggling with that, you know, it's, that's tough. I just don't know how to not do anything. It's just, uh, you know what I mean, I hope. But <laughs> say a prayer for me. Look, take care. Uh, I'm going to get to better. I'm going to watch something funny. But uh, get some chamomile tea. You'll be easy. I'll look back at you tomorrow. More. The treads. Now, if the treads on your diehards have worn down to a smooth, slippery bottom, you run risk of a major injury if hazardously stepping onto the wrong surface at the wrong time. Now for this step, you're going to need a serrated knife. Since I've already done these shoes, I'll just demonstrate the proposed pattern of cuts. Do not go any deeper than the 16th 
to an eighth of an inch. Now this can weaken the treads, well what treads are left anyhow, or turn your shoes into a squeak machine. Can I take your order? Yeah, I'll have the Krusty Special. Thank you, sir. I will squeak when it's ready. Don't go crazy at first. Do a few strikes spread apart from each other and see how it works for you. If you need more traction, you can always come back. Also, try not to cross your cuts either. This will weaken what treads you have left. If you do get some squeaks, don't worry about it. As long as you didn't go crazy, they will work themselves out. On to the soles. The soles of your feet. If you already stay on top of this, you can obviously skip this step. However, if not, you can purchase a quality pair of orthopedic inserts for anywhere between $15 to $25 on Amazon. Dr. Scholl's Active Series has a lifetime warranty and they last forever as it is. That's just my personal favorite. But don't let me persuade you to what I like. You find what works for you. And then as soon as those good old shoes finally bite the dust, you can change those inserts out to another pair of shoes. Now what this will do is help restore some balance to your step, despite the wear that's on the treads of your shoes already. The heel. If you have the shredded heel syndrome as I do, you know how painful it can be. Well, give this a shot. Take a cheap foam heel pad, cut it in half, unless you need a full one for a tighter fit. Now rip away any of those little thread balls that are left hanging around and place the pad vertically to fill that bald part. You can wedge the pad between the sole insert and the heel to test it out first. If it feels good, pull the strip off the back and connect it to the shoe. BAM! There you go. 